One of the coolest things discovered last week is that flowering plant diversity seems to have been fairly unbothered by the asteroid that killed the non-bird dinosaurs. Mass extinctions are understood in terms of both species loss and diversity loss, and it's not immediately obvious how those things are different, so I've prepared an illustrated metaphor. Imagine your kids have a toy box that contains dolls, toy cars, and building blocks, and then one night your house is struck by a burglar. A burglar with super weird priorities, because he only goes for the toy box. He goes into the toy box and he steals all of the dolls, all of the toy cars, and leaves only blocks. At this point, your children are extremely upset. Two-thirds of their toys have been stolen, and if they want to play with cars or dolls now, they are out of luck. But let's tweak this scenario very slightly. In our second scenario, the world's weirdest burglar breaks into your house and instead steals all the green blocks, all the red cars, and all the blonde-haired dolls, which still adds up to two-thirds of the toys in the box, but for the children this is a slightly better outcome. That's because they can still play dolls if they want to, they just have to be okay with none of them being blonde anymore. So what does this mean for the plants? When the Chicxulub asteroid hit the Earth 66 million years ago, lots of species of flowering plants, also known as angiosperms, sperms went extinct, but almost all of the larger clades of flowering plants from before the extinction still had at least some surviving species after the extinction. This is in stark contrast with pretty much every other type of living thing, which experienced both species loss and diversity loss. The continuity of angiosperm diversity ensured that after the extinction, when the environment started to stabilize, flowering plants were able to fill newly available ecological niches more quickly than their less diverse, non-flowering distant cousins. And that's how angiosperms took over the world. To this day, 75% of all known plant species are angiosperms. 